What's up everybody, my name is Matthew Heal, better known on Xbox, PlayStation 4, and PC as RowdyMatt51, and today I actually got the day off work, so I decided why not, let's hop back into this YouTube game and show off uh, the indie road course. I'm going to give you guys my setup, the track overview, and the breaking points. So getting with it on the setup, as you see right now, it is a completely default setup, but that is going to change here very, very soon. All right, so uh, I'm going to take you one uh, one setting at a time. So we're going to look at gears, miscellaneous tires, springs, shocks, and weights. Now, the Indianapolis Road Course is a very unique track um, in aspects where just no other track on the game even compares to that. And it makes it one of the hardest tracks to learn. So I'm going to go over each setting with you guys and pretty much show you, you know, what setting I like to use, what setting you may like to use, and and pretty much just go over everything. So starting off with the gears, um, the first gear really does not need to be that high. The first gear can be around, uh, I, I actually have it set at a 250. Um, the second gear, I leave at a 170 because as you'll see in the gameplay that I'm about to show here later on after we finish this setup, the tires spin extremely easily on this track, so I actually like a little bit of a lower second gear. It might cut down on power just a little bit, but that's actually going to eliminate a lot of tire spin. I've uh, I've tried 165 and 160, um, and they were a little bit faster, but at the same time, you know, I was just getting a lot of tire spin, and it just didn't really work out for the car that I wanted to put together, so 170 worked out perfect for me. Third gear, I used a 135, and then of course fourth gear is a locked 105. For the rerun ratio, I just turned it down to a 3.60, and that was my gear setup that I used in the NASCAR Heat Winter Series. Uh, now looking under camber, there's a lot of things you can do, and this is probably the most unique um, settings page, and this is really the definer for setting up a car. So for, um, I'll work from the bottom up. Uh, the steering offset I leave at a zero. I take the wheel lock down just a little bit. I found it to be a little bit better. Uh, grill tape, I put that up one click, but you can leave it at 30 if you'd like. Now this is one of the first tricks that I learned at this track that's going to help you go a lot faster. Uh, you can set the brake bias down really, really low at this track. Some tracks need a 78, some tracks need a 76. But at this track, um, I actually use a 68 or a 69 on wheel. If you're using controller, maybe use a 72. But for me with the wheel, I like to use my uh, 69. Now, going over to track bar here, I guess I'll, I'll work up with sway bar. But there's a lot of different options you can use with the front sway bar. And uh, they're all really unique, but what I found to work the best with some of the other settings that I had paired up with it was a 1.35 no rear sway bar and then low track bars. As you know, if you run a low front sway bar, you can run lower track bars, where if you run a higher front sway bar, you're going to have to run higher front sway bars. So, um... I like to put my left track bar at a 9.75, and then I like to match it with the right track bar at a 9.75. Now, looking camber. Now, this is uh, pretty unique. You can always leave it at 1.8, 1.8. That's my favorite um, right there. But what I used for this track, actually, is I took it and I went positive uh, 1.8 over 1.8. So I'll just type that in here. Um, I, I just felt like the positive just gave the car a little bit more stability than the negative cambers did. But it, it's entirely up to you. Uh, you may like to use like a negative 2.3 on a negative 2.0. Um, I believe for this exact racetrack, I, I used a 2.3 and a 2.0. Um... So that's what I use for that exact racetrack, but for most uh, road course racetracks, I always use the 1.8, 1.8. That's always a, a fantastic base to start off of. Um, I'll actually, no, I'll set that back to what I was using, the 2.3 over 2.0, because that's what I use at this racetrack. Tire pressures. Um, not really much to say here. Uh, take the tire pressures down. Uh, the fronts can go to 20. Uh, take the rears down. I'd say the rears can go to 18. Uh, those are good tire pressures. Um, you can pretty much run anything. The rears can be anywhere from, from 16 to 20. 
and you can take the fronts from anywhere from, I'd say, 19 being the lowest and maybe 22 being the highest. I personally like that the best, um, so that's just what I like to use. Going over to the spring settings, um, I max out my front springs to 1,200 apiece, and then my rear springs I actually have set a little bit different. Um, so let's see here, I'll finish off typing in this right spring. Um, going to the rear springs now, um, I actually use a 500 uh, in the rear springs instead of the 600. Um, some of the uh, p different points in the track that I'm going to point out here shortly, especially the, the S turns, uh, can get really, really bumpy. And having the 12 over 6 at a track like this just didn't really work out. So having a, uh, a 500 worked best for me. Uh, so I, I used a 12 and a 5. Going over now to the shock settings, uh, this is another very important uh, part to the setup at this road course because like I said, some of the corners really bump your car around so you're not going to be able to run those 3-4s, three 3-4s three at this racetrack. So uh, what I like to use here is I like to use 6s and 7s instead. So I'll run a 6-7 and then for the front, yeah, I'll run a 6 seven for the front and then for the rear, um, I like to run a, let's see here, looking at my setup, I like to run a 5-6 uh, and then a, another 5 and a 6. So 6-7, six, 6-7, seven, six, seven, five, six, five, six. If you're feeling like the car is bumping a little bit too much, you can always raise, I would say the left bump could go up a click or you could raise all of these to 7-6s. Uh, if you uh, feel that that's going to work best for you. But I just found that the 6.7s really worked the best out of, uh, out of any setup. So, uh, going over the left weight. Now, the left weight's a little bit unique at this track. Normally, you put it at 54.2, but for this track, you could actually take it down a little bit. Uh, I left it at 48.3. That's what I found worked the best. And then front weight and wedge actually were the two biggest things that took me the longest to understand um, on the setup. But what I found to work the best was a 51.2 and a 51.1. That is the exact car that I ran in the Pro League race. Uh, led a few laps and finished top five. Of course, we're going to take the front right heights down to 4.0 but uh, a few things uh, if you are coming back after a run on this video if you feel like your car is is still a little bit too loose if you feel like it's getting loose in the rear end you can always bump up the wedge a little bit or you can always uh, take the clicks if you feel like it's bumping too much if you feel like it's a little bit too loose in the front like you're just not able to get the turn you can always bump up the front wedge a couple clicks but this is a really good setup it's a really good base it's what i ran in the uh, e nascar heat winter pro series race and um you should be able to hit mm, i would say decent mid 120s decent mid 121s and um yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the setup-wise. Like I said, take a good look at this, uh, this setup. You may have to change a couple things around just because driving styles are so drastically different at this racetrack. It's not a, it's not a one-shoe-fits-all type of uh, racetrack, but this will definitely get you going in the right direction. And without further ado, let me get to the gameplay so I can show you where my braking zones are and how you can capitalize and get the fastest lap. All right, fellas. Welcome to the racetrack. Now, the secret to getting a great lap at the Indianapolis road course is actually backing up to the previous lap and hitting the final uh, sweeping right-hander heading to the start-finish line. So, I'm going to play the clip here. You're going to want to start second gear, try to maintain that high groove, and then head down low, pop it to third gear, pop it to fourth gear, try to get as straight of a line as you can head to the start-finish line. Pick up as much speed as you can as you see it is going to rev a little bit, but we're going to stop the clip right here. As you see on the right side, there is a red, uh, I believe that is a gas station pole in the infield. That is what I use as my braking point heading into turn one. You want to get your car aligned right with it 
So it's like a straight line from your passenger side door to that post, and that is the perfect braking line that you need heading into turn one. Turn one is extremely difficult because there's no markers on the wall, so it's extremely easy to overdrive the corner, underdrive the corner. So if you use that as your braking point, you're going to hit it 100% of the time. So hitting that as my braking point, you're going to want to roll around this corner. Another thing that I'd like to point out is you want to stay away from that curb. If you hit that curb, maybe just a little bit of a brush. Then what you want to do is wait for your car to stabilize, pound the gas, get a little bit of the apron on the left-hand side, keep it in second through here, hit third right here. Your car's going to get a little bit loose, but you got to handle it. All right, another thing right here with the new patch and the new update is there is a bump in the bottom groove coming out of turn four. So you want to either A, be a little bit off of the gas, I'd say 80% throttle. That way when you hit the bump, you can recover and drive off. Or as you see, like I'm doing here, I'm actually going high on the racetrack and avoiding the bump completely, allowing me to get a better drive off. Either way is good. To be honest, I normally use the low groove, but I missed the corner a little bit on this lap. So that's why I use the high groove strategy. So the high groove actually works almost a little bit better here if you can uh, get the right throttle input. So heading off from that corner, uh, this is another big uh, corner that will define the time for your lap. You want to try to take this corner as straight as possible. I'm going to play the clip right here. Get up to that uh, chicane right there. What you want to do, now you see a lot of people got course penalties uh, on this corner in the winter heat race. Um, you got to have at least two tires hit that chicane or, or the rumble strips right there, or you're going to get a course penalty. But at the same time, in order to maximize your speed, you want to try to just drive straight through that thing. So make sure when you're going through that chicane to have at least your uh, left side tires on that chicane and then once you hit them on the chicane you're good to turn the car a little bit right and finish off the corner uh, like you're going to see here. Alright heading down the extremely long straightaway that feels like it takes forever. Again, this is another corner with no braking points on the wall, no braking markers. So what I like to use here is you can see the rumble strip now on the right-hand side right there. I like to brake about one car length before that rumble strip. Make sure that you're shifting down in your gears to try to maximize your braking and not spin out. Now for this corner, you can take it a little bit. Um, you can cut it just a little bit more than you used to be able to with the recent patch, as you see I just did there. Um, and then pretty much now, this is the most important part of the racetrack. This is the defining moment. Uh, getting off this corner really, really helps. Uh, if you can keep your car to the left, make sure it's stable. And then here we go. The S-turns that throw your, your car to oblivion. A trick that I like to use here is I'll actually throw my car in third gear right when I'm about to enter the corner and then I'll put two tires on the grass and then I'll keep the other two either on the pavement or on the rumble strips uh, but your car is going to get really really bumpy and I found that using third gear actually makes it spin out less and gives your car much much more control so that is another one of my handy dandy tips that I like to use for this racetrack is use third gear at least through this first chicane and then the second chicane right after that you're good to shift back down to second gear because it gives you a little bit better turn off of that corner it can get a little bit loose so you got to watch your throttle inputs right there you can go out um, to the grass to the grass again there and then right here this is the most pivotal point um, in the racetrack right here there's no breaking points on the wall you're thinking what do I do now, it's very, very, very hard to see and even harder to see in game, but there are two lines. I'll circle them here. You want to break about a half a car length before the left side tire line. That's what I found to work the best for me. It took me many, many hours to figure out where that braking point was. And then once I found that, I pretty much hit my lap every single time. Now, 
Try to get a sweeping turn here. Make sure you're shifting down so you don't overdrive the corner. This is one of the easiest corners to overdrive. Um, I'm going to pause it right here. As you see, there's two textures of grass. You want to try to stay on that greener texture. If you even remotely touch that uh, pale texture or that little dirt texture, you will get a coarse cutting penalty, and that is not a good thing to uh, to get. So, uh, making sure you're not cutting that. Make sure your car stabilizes out. This is another corner that's really, really tricky. I'll pause it again one more time right there. But you really want to back up that corner, and then that grass will give you a course cutting penalty, so make sure to stay on the racetrack or just hit the rumble strips. Make sure your car is uh, stabilized, uh, a.k.a. it's running straight, and you're not trying to uh, hit the gas while the car is still turning. Um to get the best run off of that corner and then it's back to uh shifting from second to third you want to try to stay in the throttle the whole time maybe bump it a little bit if you can't but that's pretty much going to complete a lap here um a perfect lap here is probably going to be around a 120.6.7 this was on a full tank of gas that was lap one and then as you progress down uh, down the laps, your your times are going to get a little bit better just because there's a little bit less fuel in the tank. So at the end of a run, you should be hitting 124s and 5s. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to know for this Indianapolis Roller Racetrack. Uh, I hope these tips helped you. Um, happy to put this video together. And uh, if you like what you see here, make sure to like, comment, and uh, and subscribe. Uh, let me know you like this video. It gives me more motivation to uh, put out more videos like this. Like I said, this uh, is the setup that I used in the Winter Heat series. Finished top five with it. Let a few laps. Um, another thing that I want to say uh, is don't be discouraged if you are just trying this track out for the first time and you hit a, a 126 lap time or a 124. I started out at 126s when I first ran this. And it took me multiple hours of practice time to get where I am now. So you're not going to be able to get into it and, and run the exact lap times. But if you just keep listening to the tips in this video and, you know, keep trying, you'll you'll hit similar lap times to, to what I'm running. And um, you'll be doing good. So that's all I got to say. Thank you for watching. And um, like I said, make sure to comment. It gives me more motivation to make more videos like these. Like, subscribe, and I'll uh, leave it at that. Uh, take it easy, guys.